You may be seated. If you would turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 3, it will come up on the screen, Galatians chapter 3. But we're continuing our series on building a foundation for divine healing. This is lesson 11. And what I have realized in doing this and putting all the things that I have ever studied together on healing, to putting all of this together, I have realized that healing is not a side issue with God. Healing is in the atonement, and we need to proclaim it from the rooftops. My subject this morning is redeemed from the curse, redeemed from the curse. It's important that you understand your redemption. It's important that you understand what took place on that cross and how Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And God has listed the blessings, and God has listed the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. You can go back and read that on your own. The blessings and the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The last part of Deuteronomy chapter 28 talks about sickness and every disease and all the heartaches and all of the troubles that came to the human race, and God says that is the curse of the law. And the curse of the law includes spiritual death, it includes sickness, and it includes poverty. Sickness is a result of the curse, the curse of the law. And just like salvation, healing is in the atonement. And here's the good news. Look at Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, these are God's promises, but look at Galatians uh, 329, verse 29. It says, if you be Christ, if you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and ours according to the promise. When God first identified himself to Abraham in his compound redemptive names, he identified himself as Jehovah Jireh. And what that word means as you go to the New Testament, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We just heard a great testimony about God providing for family. I've got a testimony. You've got a testimony. We've all got testimonies about our Jehovah Jireh. But my subject this morning is redeemed from the curse. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that you have exalted your word above all your name. So I know that when I preach the word, Lord, that I am giving your people substance, substance that, that will help their faith rise because faith is always now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the substance of things not seen. We may not have gotten it yet, but faith is coming. Hallelujah. And faith comes from hearing the word of God, and that word hearing the, the word, the word there means it's a rhema. So give your people that need a miracle breakthrough a rhema this morning. Let me preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Today I want to deal, to deal with redemption from sickness because the first name that God identified himself to Israel, not to Abraham, but to Israel, after they came out of Egyptian bondage, was Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the Lord that healeth thee. Sickness entered the world as a result of sin. Therefore, healing cannot be a side issue. I said healing cannot be a side issue because sickness and disease are the works of the devil, just like sin is the work of the devil. When, when Satan entered that garden, he took the body of a serpent, and that serpent was a beautiful creature. And Eve, she's looking at that serpent, and she doesn't see two other demons that come in, sickness and disease, along with Satan. And when man fell into sin, sickness and disease and poverty and sin, that's all that it brings, the curse of the law, man fell from grace. Thank God we've been redeemed by the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. So 
We just did a complete lesson on the compound redemptive names of God, and we learned that all those names, they are fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, the names of God, they reveal the integrity of God. The names of God reveal the personality of God, and the names of God reveal the works of God. And if you've studied the names of God, then you will know in a very intimate way you will know God because his names describes the things that he does and the things that he wants to do for us. Aren't you glad that you have a Jehovah Jireh, a God that supplies all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I tell you, there's power in that name and there's power in that blood. And the blood will bring you out when nothing else will because the devil is a spirit. He has no blood. God is a spirit, but God came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ so he would understand our feelings, so he would understand our needs. And we have a great high priest that's touched with the feeling of our infirmities, Jesus Christ, that is passed into the heavens. Hallelujah. And today he's interceding. He's praying for you right now. He's praying for me. He's praying for this nation. Praise God. We have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Go on and praise him for his wonderful works of the children of men. Now, when the nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea, it was a moment of great victory. Pharaoh's army was drowned, and God told Moses, he said, you will never see that enemy again. They were totally wiped out. But when they reached the place called Marah, the people began to complain. They began to murmur. You can gripe and you can complain all you want to, and God will let you do that. But let me tell you, demons are attracted by your complaints. You got in the script for that? God said, I inhabit the praises of my people. So if you are complaining, guess what you're attracting to you? Demon spirits. They say, yeah, yeah. You, you just complain. He said, yeah, that's right. They, they did that. They just like that. And he's doing it all the time. Yeah, they don't like you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he'll feed you every lie you will listen to. But if you'll just Look unto Jesus, the author and finish of your faith, hallelujah, and realize you've been redeemed from the curse. You'll know that no weapon formed against you can ever prosper. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him because you got the Word, and Jesus is the Word. Somebody praise him, hallelujah, that you're in a church that preaches the Word. My Lord, Myra, the people were thirsty. The waters were bitter. And God told Moses, said, I, you see that tree over there? He said, I want you to cut it down. I want you to cast it in that bitter water, and those waters will become sweet. How sweet it is <laughs> to know Jesus, uh, the living water. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, that tree, it represented the cross of Jesus where he would redeem us. This is where God revealed himself to his covenant people as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, their healer. Do you know him as your Jehovah Rapha? Well, you can. Look at Exodus 15, 26. God said to his people, if thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, will do that which is right in his sight. will give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes. God said, I will put or not permit the disease upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. I am the Lord that healeth thee. God said, I am your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord your healer. And I'll promise you one thing. This is one area that you will have to fight the good fight of faith and contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And if you'll do that, praise God, God will bring you out. If you ever understand your covenant rights, under the new birth, it will make it much easier for you to appropriate the faith to be healed. Let me say that again. If you ever understand your covenant rights under the new birth, it will make it much easier for you to, to appropriate the faith to be healed. Some people are healed by the gifts of the Spirit. Some people are healed by your faith. Some people are healed by taking Holy Communion. I got, I, I got a lesson on leaven to divine ways that God heals, and then he also heals using people, medical science. But if you ever understand your covenant rights, 
you'll be able to get some great things from God. Hallelujah. We have a blood covenant. We have a blood covenant, and that guarantees our redemption in every area that the curse brought. The same blood that saves us is the same blood that heals us. Let's take a look about at that. Everybody likes to quote Isaiah 53. We have a prophecy right here in Isaiah 53 of Calvary's atonement. Look, look at the first part, Isaiah 53 and 1. The prophet says, who had believed our report? Do you believe God's report? People say they do. Do you really believe it? We we'll just keep on saying what God says. Who had believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And look at verse 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Now, I'm going to give you some work to do if you want to do it. If you don't, you can just take my word for it because I've already done the research for you. The, the Hebrew word for grief there is koli. That's the Hebrew word, which means sickness and grief. And the Hebrew word for sorrows is makab, which means pain and sorrows. And the true meaning of these words gives us a complete understanding of the atonement. You can verify this. Go home, take a strong concordance, or get a friend of yours that has one, and, and look at what the Bible has to say about these words. So it would read like this. Surely he has borne our sickness and grief and carried our pains and sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Or you can just choose one of those words. But I want you to know that everything that you need is supplied by our Jehovah Jireh, and our Jehovah Rapha is our healer. Hallelujah. So he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, upon Jesus, the coming Redeemer. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now, that's Isaiah, what he said. This is a prophecy that was given 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And the Gospel of Matthew, we find the fulfillment of this prophecy. In the Gospel of Matthew, I call it the Holy Ghost commentary on Isaiah chapter 53. Look at Matthew 8, 16 and 17. Peter's mother-in-law, she was sick with a fever, and Jesus heals her, and the people find out that, she, that Jesus is in the house. Now, I want you to see this. See, the people, they find out Jesus is there, and Jesus always attracts a crowd. So look at this. When the eve was come, they brought unto him, unto Jesus, many that were possessed with devils. So I want you to look at that. These people had some devils that caused some of this sickness. And he cast out the spirit with his words and healed all that was sick. Now look at verse 17. He did it for a reason, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah or Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bow our sicknesses. And I tell the devil many times, I've said, I know you're trying to afflict my body. I know you're trying to bring me down, but you're illegal. Get out of my body. Go in the name of Jesus. Don't you know I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost? Don't you know I've been bought with a price? Don't you know? Sure you know. I have authority over you, and you have to go when I tell you to go in Jesus' mighty name. We got a call the other night, and my little granddaughter, she was so sick, little Ashley, and she was white, just turned white. Her, her countenance was just white. And I, Grand Jerry, will you pray for me? And so I, I started praying, and she goes to sleep while I'm praying. Well, I, I prayed all night long, and I said, God, wake me up. Every time I wake up, bring that child to my remembrance. Not only did I pray, but Teresa told me, said, I didn't sleep much. I prayed all night, too. So you might have to pray all night, but praise God. The next day, I, I text them early in the morning, but I didn't get an answer, a, a call. But about noontime, she called me, and she said, hey, Grand Jerry. I said, are you feeling better? She, her her cancerous, her colors all returned. The cough, you know, is, is on its way completely out. And uh, she's been doing well. To, uh, Jessica said she slept so well. And, but see, that's what you want. You want to understand the word of God. And I talked to the devil like this. I said, devil, listen to me. This is Jerry Nelson. That's my seed. 
And God has always healed my children. And God will always heal my children. Jennifer said, no, shaking her head, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you need healing, you need to know. And when you, someone needs healing that's close to you, you need to know what the Word says. And you need a faith that says, God did this, and I'm going to receive what my Jehovah Jireh and my Jehovah Rapha, whatever name it is that you need from God, study those names, get to know God intimately, and you will see your prayers answered. You can move any mountain in the name of Jesus, and I want to look back to the Word of God and show you some of this. Hallelujah. So the prophets of Isaiah was fulfilled when, in Matthew 8, 16, and 17 when Jesus healed all of these people. Now, when we come to 1 Peter 124, we're no longer dealing with a prophecy. You have to know this. We're not dealing with the fulfillment of that prophecy, but we're dealing with an accomplished fact, something that Jesus did on the cross. Look at 1 Peter 2:24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Brother Ray sings a song. If you were healed, then I am healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you were, then I am. I'm healed, I'm whole. And you just have to fight and get a bulldog bite and let the devil know, you, I know you're coming. Jesus said you're coming, but I'm standing strong in the name of Jesus. The battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's, and this day shall he deliver you into my hand. The violent take it by force, and you'll just have to rise up in your faith and take some things that belong to you. Glory to God. So Peter is writing after the resurrection, after Jesus went back to heaven, so here we have the ultimate revelation that healing is in the atonement. That is the ultimate revelation because he moves from the verb are to the verb were. That is God's ultimate revelation that he, healing is in the atonement and that he is your Jehovah Rapha. See, the scriptures reveal in both the Old Testament and the New Testament that God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Now, in Psalms 103, I'm just laying a foundation. God says, I don't want you to forget any of my benefits. Now, look at Psalms 103, verse 3. The great prophet David, he said, he forgives all our sin, all your iniquity, heals all your disease. So all means all. It doesn't mean it's not coming. Jesus said the thief is coming. But I have come that you might have life. I'm coming to give you life and that more abundantly. What is sickness? Sickness is limited to death, and if you get sick enough, you'll die. So you better get into the Word and start proclaiming you are who God said you are. You have what God said you have. You can do what God says you can do, and you can do all things through Christ, who is your great strength. In this one verse of Scripture, Psalm 103, verse 3, salvation and healing are united for the human person. That, the Word of God is so beautiful when you study it. And as long as God forgives sin, He will heal our broken bodies because healing is not a side issue with God. He puts them both together. And I've been preaching along those lines. In Malachi chapter 3, the, la ch the last of the Old Testament books, God said, I am the Lord. I change not. Now we go to the New Testament in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That means what he did back on the sandy shores of Galilee, what he did in his earthly ministry, he will do it today, hallelujah, because he never, ever changes. What he's done for one person, he will do for you because he is no respect a person. Just take God at his word, and you will see great and mighty works done by the hand of Jesus Christ as the Holy Ghost works in our midst. Go and praise God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God does not change. That means he's the same identical person in every aspect to every generation. He is our Jehovah Rapha. I like the sound of that. Jehovah Rapha. Woo! Make, woo! Makes me feel good. Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. The Lord my healer. 
That means if I was healed, I am healed. Hallelujah. No matter what I'm going through, I've still got it. Hallelujah. Because he said it. I didn't say it. I'm not preaching what I say. I'm preaching what the Word of God, the Holy Bible has to say. And this is your inheritance book. Get into the book. Read the pages. Hide it in your heart. Praise God. And watch God work. Hallelujah. Now, what the Word of God says that about sickness, it says it is the curse of the law and that Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's what the Bible says. Now, let me tell you what religion says. Religion has taught us that sickness is a blessing from God and that God allows sickness to come into our lives to teach us lessons. Religion has taught that to thousands upon thousands of people. I've even had people tell me, I am suffering for the Lord. And if this is God's will for me, I'm perfectly willing to suffer for the Lord. And I have thought, you can't talk to people like that, but so much. And I thought, what a tragedy that religion has taught that to someone. They need to get the book. They need to read the book or find some good books on healing. Praise God. Some preachers have been taught that because they were taught that in the seminaries that they went to. And so they have taught that same lie from hell to God's people. Sickness is of the devil, just like sin is of the devil. And you've got to know that, and you've got to know God's will if you're going to resist the devil. God does not teach anyone by making them sick. God doesn't have any sickness to give you. There's no sickness in God. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no sin up there either. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. He's going to wipe away every tear. No gravesides on the hills of glory. Only joy unspeakable that's full of glory and an eternity with the one that redeemed us. Oh, I've been redeemed. I'm redeemed. I got to say so. You got to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, shout and praise God. God teaches us by his word. And that's what I'm doing today. And the Bible teaches that Jesus bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Now, sickness is going to try to attack you just like sin will try to attack you and attempt you to do wrong. So you, you're talking about two twins when we talk about sin and sickness. If you understand that, it'll help you. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, yet millions of Christians through the ages have been taught that God made them sick. But I've had hundreds and hundreds of people healed in my ministry simply because they use their faith and because of the gifts of the Spirit that have been operating. God comes down on the side of the sick and the suffering. And God says, I'm your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Has he redeemed you from sin? Do you know that your name is in the book of life? Do you know that if you died at this moment, you would go to heaven? Sure you know that. How do you know that? Because the word of God proclaims that. So how do you know that you're healed even though you're fighting against the, uh, the onslaught of Satan? You know it. Praise God, because of what the Word of God has proclaimed. You cannot look at what other people have done. You cannot do that and and walk where I'm talking about walking. Why did grandmother die? She was a model Christian. None of your business. Put uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 up there. See, it's none of your business why somebody else didn't get it. If God wanted you to know why they didn't get it, God would tell you why they didn't get it. God said, I only tell you, only believe all things are possible to him that believes. Deuteronomy 29, 29. And all things are possible to him that believe it. Look at this. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. There are some things Paul said we see through a glass darkly. We know in part, but we're going to know in full. We don't know why. It's not my business. It's not your business why that person didn't get it. Use your faith. 
and go after God. Hallelujah. That's a secret. It belongs to God. If he wants you to know, he'll tell you about it. If he wants me to know, he'll tell me about it. So I just leave it with God and keep on shouting the victory, keep on walking down the road of life, watching God bless people, save people, and heal people. Hallelujah. God even put healing in the human body. As soon as you get sickness or fever in your body, that little white corpuscles, <laughs> they rise up like an army and they go out to fight sickness. And disease. It's built into your DNA. God built that into you. So God put healing in the body. And God put a desire in the hearts of men and women to enter into the medical field and to do all that they can to relieve human suffering. God puts the desires in our heart. God puts the dream in our heart. God puts the desire in our heart, if you read his word, to rise up in faith and receive what Jesus has provided. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for the nurses. Thank God for the hospitals. Thank God for the medicines. Thank God for anything and everything that relieves human suffering. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God has given us the plant world, and many of the medications that we have, they come from the plants that we have. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God wants us healed because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God said, I'm going to walk in you. I'm going to dwell in you. So he'll heal you from the inside out because he's in you. Aren't you glad for that? I am. Hallelujah. God says, I, I'm your Jehovah Rapha. Now, I want you to notice what happened when Jesus came into the world in a human body. Look at Matthew 123. It's fulfilling another prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. But the mystery of God that he invades is Christ in you. Hallelujah. So let, let's uh, look at this. Jesus later says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, the works I'm doing, they're not my works. They're the works of the Father. So the word was made flesh. God needed a human body. He's illegal on planet Earth. He gave dominion to man. You're not illegal. Hallelujah. Man gave his dominion over to the devil. God made himself illegal on this planet. He's a spirit. And the devil gets dominion from Adam because he's the one that sold us out, not Eve. He's the one that had the dominion. And then Jesus comes in a human body. And the devil, he thought he had it made. And he said, the voice is back. The voice I heard in the wilderness, in the, back there in the garden, that voice is back. And Jesus, everywhere he goes, he starts healing people. Hallelujah. So look at Acts 10, 38. Now, the entire Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, they are involved in our healing. I want you to see this. Acts 10, 38. How God, as the Father, known as Jesus of Nazareth, as the Son, with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit, and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. Do you see that? Oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The devil tries to oppress you. He tries to oppress me with his sickness and his disease. Sickness and disease, they are the oppression of the devil. And Jesus said the thief is coming. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, don't you get me mixed up with him like some people have. He said, I am come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. So God has redeemed us. And Jesus, he goes about doing good, healing all that were pressed of the devil. So let's look at the actions of Jesus. Jesus was a man of action. Hallelujah. He was a man that everywhere he went, he was setting the captive free. Even when he announced his mission, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm the anointed one. Hallelujah. He said, and I've come to set the captive free. Look in Matthew's gospel. We find a woman with an issue of blood. She's been sick 12 long years. She spent everything she had on doctors. 
Dr. Luth gives an account of this too. She spent everything she had on doctors, but she grew worse. But she came to Jesus and she said something within herself. Faith starts on the inside and it works its way outside. With the heart, man believeth, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. She said within herself, I can just touch the hem of his garment. She knew that Malachi had said, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wing. She said, he's the one. I recognize him. He's Messiah. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So she touched him, and when she did, power flowed out of Jesus. And he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. He didn't say you're healed because I'm the son of God. He said, your faith has done it. It was your faith. It was your faith. You got faith. Use it. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself is the gift of God. Use what God has given you. Hallelujah. Her faith made a whole. He cleansed the leper. He healed the lame. He opened blinded eyes. He opened deaf ears. He delivered the oppressed. He offered forgiveness of sin to the sinner. And he's a saving Jesus, and he's a healing Jesus. Hallelujah. When Jesus healed all these people, he was doing the will of the Father. He said, I've come to do the Father's will. You've got to know that. Jesus was a man of action. And look at Mark's gospel. We find a leper who came to Jesus. Mark 1, verse 40. It says, and a leper came to him beseeching him, kneeling down to him, one translation said worshiping him, and saying unto him, if thou will, that can make me clean. Huh. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. This leper knew that God could heal him. But he said, if you will, you can. He did not doubt that God could do it. So in the pathway of, to your miracle, you have got to know the will of God. You've got to know what the Word says. And if you're sitting in a church that's telling you that God doesn't want to heal you, it might not be God's will to heal you, you need to get out of that place. You need to come to a place where the Word of God is preached and rightly divided. See, the leper cried, if you will, you can make me whole. I'm sure that as he made his way to Jesus, the devil talked to him like he talks to us, said, he's not going to heal you. You're full of leprosy. There's no hope for you. Look at your fingers. They have fallen off. Look at your toes. They are gone. Look at your nose. It's been eaten away. Do you think God is going to heal you? It's too late for you. Don't you know you're a leper, you're untouchable, and you have to stand afar off and cry, unclean, unclean, unclean. Don't come near me, I'm unclean. It's no hope, the devil said. It's too late. You're untouchable. Now, this man was desperate, so he just kept on coming to Jesus. That's what desperate faith does. And God, he hears the cry of the destitute, and God will not turn the destitute away. The Bible teaches that. So here's a man that's untouchable trying to get to Jesus. Finally, this untouchable, Jesus touches him. Watch this, Mark 141. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thy clean. Jesus said, I will. The leper said, if it be thy will, but Jesus said, he counseled that I will, if he said, I will. And he heals everybody that comes to him. He said, I will. That's what I came for. I came to make you whole because you have been redeemed. See, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. And Jesus has come to make us whole, spirit, soul, and body. Now, let's look at Luke's gospel because I want you to see a daughter of Abraham, someone that has covenant with a spirit of infirmity. This is an amazing story because of the power of the blood covenant. And Jesus was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He's in church. Look at Luke 13, 11. 
And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed over together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And the ruler of the synagogue, he got all upset because Jesus did this on the Sabbath day. <laughs> Look at Luke 13, 15. The Lord answered him and said, Thy hypocrite, does thou not teach each one of you on the Sabbath, loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lend it away to the watering? And ought not this woman, look at this, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound. Satan did it. Satan did it. A daughter of Abraham, a covenant child, whom Satan has bound. Lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bondage on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, this daughter of Abraham that Satan has made sick, she ought to be loose from this bondage. See, God didn't make her sick. The devil did it. He's all bowed over like this. You've seen people like it. Can't even look up to see. That's the devil. God made us to stand upright. God made us to be healed. Hallelujah. Put it in our body. God didn't make her sick. The devil did. And Jesus said, this daughter of Abraham ought to be loose from this bondage. So healing is the in the atonement. Every born-again Christian should be healed from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us. Go back to Galatians 3.29. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So if you be Christ, then Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promises. I love that. See, this woman had a spirit of infirmity. And much of the sickness that we experience, it is a spirit of infirmity. And you've got to know that. Today, medical science would call what this woman had in this story arthritis or curvature of the spine. But Jesus called it what it was, a spirit of infirmity. And Jesus, knowing that she was a daughter of Abraham, he healed her and loosed her from that bondage. I got one more gospel I want to share with you, the gospel of John. We find a man at the pool of Bethesda. He had been sick with a spirit of infirmity for 38 long years. So now in Matthew's gospel, the woman with the issue of blood, she had been sick. For 12 years. In Luke's gospel, the woman with the spirit of infirmity, she had been sick for 18 long years. And the man at the pool of Bethesda, he had been sick for 38 long years. And the devil wants to make you think that what you have is permanent and you're not going to get your blessing. So uh, as I was looking at these accounts, I saw that Jesus, you know, he's on his way there to the pool. A man at the pool sick 38 years with an infirmity. He was lying on a bed by the pool waiting for the troubling of the water. The angel came down in a certain season, stirred up the water. And whoever got in first into that water when it was trouble, they were healed. So here's an afflicted cripple with his eyes fixed on water that he can never reach. And Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? You see, this man was not only sick in his body, his inner man was sick. His inner man was lying down. And Jesus spoke to this man's will. Do you want to be made whole? So your body and my body, they have no willpower of their own. They only have reflexes. And they respond to our will. So you've got to exercise your human will before your body can ever move. You've got to do that. Your will, your re reflexes respond to your human will. You need to know that. Jesus saw that this man's willpower was not operating. His inner man had given up. His hope was gone. He had accepted his condition. He was lying down on the inside, and he was not operating in faith. So Jesus said, what he's asking you and me, do you want to be made whole? He said, I have no man to put me in the water. When the water's of trouble, I don't have anybody to help me. He began to make all kinds of excuses. 
But Jesus didn't accept any of his excuses. He commanded him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. And when he did, the healing power of God hit him, and he rose up, praise God, and walked out of that place healed and whole. Jesus came to do the Father's will. He healed all that were pressed of the devil. When Jesus gave us the great commission in Mark's gospel, he said, signs follow them that believe. And one of those signs is they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the early church, they went forth. The Bible says they preached the gospel. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders following. And so the picture of the true church in the book of Acts is a picture of a church that heals in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I want you when he called me, I want you to teach, preach, and heal the sick in my name. Jesus, the head of the church, gave supernatural gifts. He did that because God wants us healed. Hallelujah. And you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, and one of those curses is sickness. Let us stand. If you need healing this morning, I want you to make your way to the front. You can be healed right where you're sitting. Psalms 107 says he sent his word and healed them. Delivered them from that destruction. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. I've enjoyed teaching this series because it has made me delve deep into the word of God. And it has shown me some of the great treasures that belong to us because we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ bore our curse. Christ bore our sin. Christ bore our sickness. Christ bore away poverty. So, Father, we just praise you today. I just release the glory of God your miracle working power. Lord, we've had people come up and we've laid hands upon them for about 10 weeks now. Hallelujah. 10 lessons, Lord. This is number 11. You're a healing Jesus. We love you. Praise you. Lord, I thank you for manifesting your glory. Lord, Thank you that we are the children of Abraham because we belong to you. And you said, ought not this daughter or this man or this woman or this person be loosed from this infirmity which Satan has brought and bound her with? So I just release the Spirit of God, Lord. I release your miracle healing power. I release it and thank you, Lord, that you were wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. By your stripes, we were healed. Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful goodness and mercy that you move with compassion for us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Brother Ray, sing that song. We're going to go out of here singing this song. He was wounded for our transgressions. If you need to have hands laid upon you, please come up. I'll anoint you with oil. The Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick. If you've committed sin, they're always together. God will heal you. Are you?